everybody, Hilton Yam here from 10A Performance, back again the 10A Performance Lab. If you have bought a production 1911 within the last 20, 25 years or so, you likely have uh, some or many MIM metal injection molded parts uh, in your gun. Today we're going to talk about uh, what that means to have those parts in there and whether you should be running out to replace them or not. Metal injection molding, or MIM, is a process where you take powdered metal and a binder, often a polymer, um, melt that into a slurry, uh, inject it into a mold, and then that part is a little bit oversized, like 20% oversized, and then it gets heated, baked, uh, the process is actually called sintering, um, gets sintered, and then the binder uh, is removed by the heat process, and then you end up with a part that's actually the correct size. It shrinks down, of course, and uh, there you go. Uh, so that's metal injection molding. It is an expensive process to set up, but what it does is, uh, per part cost, is lower for the manufacturer uh, once they're set up, of course. And the metal injection molded parts, uh, you can get a very complex geometry uh, that is much less expensive again, per part, than a machined part. So for example, if you're doing a slide stop, uh, a MIM slide stop is be way, way less expensive than a machined slide stop. Like anything, uh, metal injection molding uh, has its issues. It's gotten to the point where a lot of 1911 purists, uh, myself included, uh, are really uh, apprehensive if you say, hey, this gun has all MIM small parts in it. Uh, and it is certainly a cause for concern. Like any other manufacturing process, uh, MIM is one of those things where you can do it right, you can do it wrong. So you can create an excellent part uh, that is MIM, or you can create a really lousy part. You can do the same whether it's cast, uh, injection molded out of polymer, or machined from bar stock or forgings. So that applies. The main issues that we see with MIM parts is uh, excessive or inadequate surface hardness, uh, and then also um, just uh, issues with the uh, part density, it not being dense enough because of its uh, origin as a piece of powdered metal. The 1911 is an inherently expensive design to produce. Obviously it was designed over 100 years ago when certain machining practices were the only way to produce things. You look at modern uh, polymer service pistols, for example, uh, they're filled with uh, stampings, plastic injection molded, I'm sorry, space age polymer uh, injection molded parts. Um, and uh, they actually do have, some of them have MIM parts. Uh, you'd be surprised where you encounter them and they're totally a non-issue because they're executed correctly and uh, the parts are appropriate, uh, appropriately engineered. Uh, that's, that's how they're supposed to be by the design. So 1911 suffers a little bit because the design was originally all machine components and uh, the complexity of those machine parts makes for a very expensive gun and uh, folks don't want to pay expensive gun price for all that and they just want a 1911 shaped gun. So it drives the uh, desired price point down and the only way for manufacturers to realistically achieve that uh, is usually by using metal injection molded parts, which again now are quite common uh, if you're looking at a gun between $500 to $1,000. <laughs> How can you tell if a part is MIM or not? Uh, other than the fact that probability says that a uh, price point gun between $500 to $1,000 is going to be filled with MIM parts, if you want to look at the parts uh, as an educational kind of thing and understand what you're looking at, uh, you may see mold lines, that's parting lines where the halves of the mold come apart. Uh, you may see sprue marks. Um, that The sprue is basically the gate area where the uh, mold material, the molten material, gets introduced into the geometry of the mold. And then that gate closes and you end up with a squish or a void, uh, and, uh, and that part is, is evident. And the last one that is the easiest to spot, um, because sometimes you can hide both the sprue and the mold lines, uh, but uh, the ejector marks. So once the completed part, the hardened part, uh, is ready to be removed from the mold, there are ejector pins uh, built into the mold and they uh, basically push the part out. And a lot of times you will see those circular indentations uh, as part of the, uh, as byproducts of the mold process uh, right on the part. And you may also 
C, that's a place where they put part numbers and other information uh, right into it. And uh, it's kind of hard to uh, produce that kind of marking inside an indentation other than it being molded. <laughs> So the biggest question I get is, uh, hey, is it okay to have MIM parts in my 1911? First of all, let's be realistic with what we're using it for. If you take it out to the range every now and then to uh, shoot some targets uh, and it's just for fun, then pretty much anything that's going to, as long as the gun works okay uh, to whatever level of your expectation is, it's going to be fine. So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, Sometimes the MIM parts are, are executed pretty well, uh, or it's just really a non-factor based on how you use it. However, if it's a gun that uh, you want to use for self-defense, uh, duty use, uh, and certainly both of those tethered to uh, high round count training, you're probably going to outgrow those parts at some point and you want to replace them either when they fail, wear excessively, uh, or just preemptively. And, uh, or if you just like to tinker, because you're probably watching this channel because you like to tinker with your stuff. So that's all good by me. So let's start with uh, prioritizing where is MIM less of an issue uh, in the gun. So uh, the grip safety is probably the first thing I'll tell you is it doesn't matter how it's made, whether it is forge, bar stock, cast, uh, or MIM, which are all manners in which uh, I've seen uh, grip safeties made, it doesn't matter because it's really not doing that much work. Um, Chip McCormick Corporation, uh, back probably about 10 years ago now from the filming of this video, uh, used to market uh, MIM grip safety, which was excellent. The lines were really clean, the geometry was nice, and it went on uh, the frames pretty nice. Uh, and I actually like those a lot. Uh, so grip safety is really not too much of an issue. If you are running a thumb safety, a single side thumb safety uh, on your 1911, uh, you can get away with a metal injection molded one uh, probably just fine because it's not bearing that much stress on the one side. Uh, however, if you're running an ambidextrous safety where it has the joint in the middle where uh, the two sides meet and uh, flex and torque on each other, then that becomes a kind of a non-starter for metal injection molded part. The disconnector, it's really not doing that much work either. And uh, a lot of times uh, that's, that's a place where it's just fine. Uh, as long as the geometry and the surface finish of the part is okay. Firing pin stop is, uh, it's okay. Uh, it is, it's getting hit a lot by the hammer, but uh, it's, it's not a difficult job. Um, but a lot of times dimensionally they're, they're fairly poor, uh, but otherwise firing pin stop, it's not a showstopper if it's, it's a MIM part. Sights, believe it or not. Yeah, they got metal injection molded sights. Doesn't matter, it's fine. Magazine catch uh, can get away with being metal injection molded. Uh, I've seen some really bad ones, seen some decent ones, uh, but it's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Where is it that in your gun uh, having a MIM part is really just not a, not a good time? I would say the slide stop is one of those places. Now I'll caveat that I've seen some guns, uh, really high round count guns with good quality metal injection molded slide stops that worked uh, just fine and had absurd round counts on them. However, uh, I see a lot of really low quality uh, metal injection molded slide stops and um, I'd rather not roll the dice to see which it is. Uh, you can have issues with the lobes break off or the pins break, uh, rather not. Uh, just get a real good uh, quality uh, machined slide stop and uh, that's, that's a much better call. I uh, already highlighted the AMB safety because of the manner in which the two halves of the safety need to join. There's a lot of torque on there and uh, depending on the hardness of the part, uh, you can end up having uh, snaps uh, or cracks or pops. Oh, it's a cereal. Never mind. Uh, but anyway, the uh, Ambi safety is uh, kind of a no-go for uh, metal injection molded. I don't like having a sear and hammer, which are MIM, uh, because not so much that they're going to fail and kill you or, or you're going to die because uh, they are um, just going to crumble into dust. Uh, usually it's an issue of their geometry um, needing to be held uh, to very 
uh, tight tolerances to achieve that nice trigger press. And usually, uh, if you need to make any adjustments, polishing, whatever, uh, metal injection molded parts tend not to be hardened all the way through, or through hardened. They tend to have a, what we would call a case hardening, where the outside is, is pretty hard, and it may not be hard all the way through. So you start cutting on it, and then the inside soft, and then it's a whole deal. So uh, just not a super big fan of metal injection molded sears and hammers. Plunger tube. Ooh, I have seen so many failed um, plunger tubes just in general. It's a difficult part to get just right. So you want uh, correct hardness, correct geometry, uh, correct everything to make sure it works because uh, if your plunger tube falls off, you're pretty hosed. Uh, metal injection molded plunger tubes are just a no-go. The ejector, it takes quite a beating. Um, I don't want to, again, have to roll the dice to see if I got a really good MIM ejector or a kind of bad one. Uh, just not a fan of it uh, being in the ejector either. Alright, so what do we do if we've got some MIM? Uh, I've seen a lot of different 1911s over the years uh, run to high round counts, and I've seen forge parts, machine bar stock parts, uh, cast parts, MIM parts fail. Uh, the execution of them, and sometimes just bad luck. You get a single bad specimen out of what could be thousands of parts, and then pow, there you see a breakage. And it doesn't mean that um, forging is bad or casting is bad or whatever. You get the right applications, the uh, right execution of the uh, material process, and it's going to be okay. But um, that said, what do we do uh, if we are just not happy, uh, just don't get a warm fuzzy feeling because certain parts uh, we talked about in your gun uh, you've now identified as being metal injection molded and you, now, now you can't sleep at night. Like I said, um, there are certain parts that I really don't care, like a single side safety, grip safety, it's kind of a non-issue. Uh, and then other parts that I'm not super excited about. Uh, in a perfect world, a 1911 wouldn't have any metal injection molded parts because um, that it's really just a better gun with with machined parts like the how it was originally designed the issue that i encounter most often with factory mim parts is hardness uh, for example a lot of the factory mim grip safeties they're so hard to try to make any adjustments to them uh, will knock the teeth right off of a file. They're harder than a file. So you end up having to use a diamond hone and uh, it becomes a real pain just to make the smallest of adjustment. So uh, hardness being inappropriate. And then a lot of times uh, the quality, uh, the, the dimensions, geometry of the part, even if it was the same part made of the same shape and dimensions and tolerances and all that, but it was machined out of the most glorious piece of bar stock, but it was still crooked and lumpy and too small or too big. It doesn't matter then. Uh, toss that thing out and get something better in there. So that that's a, kind of a two big issues, the hardness and the dimensional uh, issues with a lot of the factory parts, which are just coincidentally MIM. Well, where does this leave us? As you guys probably surmised, I am really, really picky with my 1911s. I built most of the ones that I used and then started a whole company with parts that I designed for them. So I, in general, uh, would say just flat out no to having any kind of factory MIM parts in any gun. Uh, so for example, this uh, Springfield Range Officer Operator uh, that you probably saw in my 1911 Duty Tune video uh, available on DVD, link below. Um, I gutted it, took out all of the MIM parts, and uh, replaced it with high quality uh, machined components, machined from bar stock. So uh, I really, really like this gun now. It's, uh, it's very nice, and uh, all the parts are top quality machined components. Uh, I had the option to replace everything, so I did. As far as uh, all factory guns, well, this is uh, one of my STI Staccato 2011s. Not a single metal injection molded part or cast part in there. Every component's machined, so I have no compulsion to uh, replace anything on that. So in Hilton Safe, 1911s, 2011s, no MIM parts. If you have a mid-range production gun that you got and you're pretty happy with it, and then after you watch this video, now you're suddenly unhappy, uh, well, just, just shoot it and keep at it and then uh, work through the thing piecemeal. You can refer back to the earlier part of the video as far as what to replace, when, that kind of thing, what would prioritize. 
or just keep shooting training with it until something uh, fails or becomes out of spec or just is no longer satisfactory to you. Uh, you don't have to uh, stay up late at night uh, going through uh, the gun and replacing all the parts right away before your next range session because it's not absolutely necessary Be honest with how you use the gun and uh, and how it's been performing for you and whether or not it uh, is meeting your expectations Before you just uh, rip everything out for the sake of ripping it out. Uh, also uh, when you're doing this remember uh, The parts are not uh, like Legos. You can't just plug in new parts. So uh, make sure you're doing it right and uh, obviously I have a DVD, I'll put a link below, uh, which goes over all of it. And maybe you wanna watch that before you got any of the parts out and, uh, and realize that maybe you're either in over your head or just not into uh, using tools that much. But anyway, um, now, now I've given you the tools to assess uh, what's inside your gun, what's going to be critical, what's not critical, and uh, check it out. If you've got questions, drop them in the comments below. Like, subscribe. Tell your friends, all that stuff. Until next time, I'm Hilton Yamo of 10A Performance, and remember, only performance counts.